so glad that you're here today to join us for this amazing live webinar with two sisters writing and publishing to learn about Power Journal. Power Journal is now a workbook that we have available on barnesandnoble.com as well as amazon.com. And it goes hand in hand with the online community that we've created called powerjournal.life. So instead of powerjournal.com, it's powerjournal.life. This is so amazing because it started as an idea, as something that I discovered, created when I combined journaling, which I've been doing most of my life, as has Catherine, and we learned from our father to do that daily, and the practice of meditation. So when I meditate, I write about my intention for the meditation. And then I do the meditation and the guidance that I receive, I immediately write down. So I discovered in the course of doing that, the more I set a strong intention for the meditation and ask for specific guidance to help me heal, learn, grow, then I received more information that I then wrote about and all this information helped me learn and grow to evolve into a person I've never felt better in my whole life. Now, most people um, are looking for something. You may be looking for something, a way to find your best self and create your best life. And you may feel like you're not living that right now. This is a tool that can help you do that. So we packaged this lesson that can help you into a 28 day challenge that enables you to do one journal entry each day that forces you to dive deep within yourself to find your most authentic voice, your deepest truth that can guide you to create your best self and your best life. Sometimes we wake up one day and we're like, how did I get here? This is not the life that I thought I would have. This is not the self that I thought I would have. How can I change it? Well, that's really overwhelming and terrifying. How can you change it? You can do that one journal entry at a time. Now the key to accessing our most authentic voice and our deepest truth, our heart's greatest desires occurs when we're in the deeply, deeply intuitive and relaxed state of meditation. Now there's all kinds of meditation information out there now. There's a lot of people talking about it. But when I first tried to meditate many years ago, it was horrible. It was like my brain was tuned into 10 radio stations that were all blaring loud, bad news. And they would just, just be chaos in my mind. It was awful. So, um, hope you're still there where the screen went blank, but whatever. Um, so anyway, Dr. Rama, he's a spiritual teacher. He taught me how to meditate. And once I tuned in to the divine guidance that we all have access to, but we tune out because we live in such a noisy world where we're constantly bombarded by our devices and the ringing and chinging and chiming of text messages and distractions and the eye candy of certain apps on social media, <laughs> um, it's really difficult to go inward it's also difficult to go inward to find out who you really are because we oftentimes grow up trying to meet the expectations of our families, our communities, society standards and conventions. And again, decades later, we wake up like, wait a minute, this is not a true reflection of me. A true reflection of you starts inside of you. It's not about your name your house, your job, your family, your community, your education. A true reflection of you lies deep within yourself. It's in your soul. And so Power Journal enables you to dive deep within that treasure chest of self-knowledge and plunder its depths to find the greatest treasures about yourself that can come in the form of wisdom, guidance, discoveries that you didn't even know you had within yourself and desires that you want to pursue in the physical world. So let's start 
by getting a quick introduction to the meditative state that enables you to access this inner voice, this inner truth. So I really want to demystify meditation because again, there's so many people out there and it's awesome talking about meditation, but until it really clicks for you, it's just going to be a frustrating experience. So my mission is to make it as simple as possible for you. Essentially, you just want to be still and quiet in a place where you won't be interrupted. And you close your eyes and you take some very, very, very deep breaths, so deep that your, your belly expands outward. So And then let the air out as far as you can. Push it all, all out. So you're expending the old air and inhaling fresh new air. And it feels really, really refreshing to inhale deeply because sometimes when we're stressed, we breathe in a very shallow manner, which is not good for us at all. And it deprives our brains of the best oxygen. So to have the best meditative experience, you want to have a super strong, fresh burst of oxygen saturating your system. So let's take a few more deep, deep breaths and exhalations. Now, just the act of breathing in and out is relaxing unto itself. It has physiological responses in your body that help you calm down. Now, next, to begin a meditation, I would like for you to imagine that the top of your head is like a flower and there's petals and they just open up. And that's your crown chakra. So you can imagine a crown that's got the upstanding um circle around your head that is the portal to allow the divine light from source heaven god spirit whatever labels you choose to um, use and if you're not into spirituality you can just think of it as sunlight lightness brightness illumination coming into the top of your head so you this is called calling in the light. The light to me is God and God is love and light. And so you want to call that power in. Now we're all born with a glow of light within us. It's our soul. The reason we know our soul is a burst of electricity is because if you had cardiac arrest, which I pray that you won't have, but if you do, Paramedics will come with a defibrillator, which will deliberate, deliver an electric jolt to restart your heart. Thus, the conclusion, very simply, that electricity, energy, is keeping us alive, and that's our soul. Because when we die, our soul leaves our bodies, hence the electric spark that's keeping our hearts beating is gone. So, we all have this beautiful sort of orb of golden white light within us that's our soul we live in a world that tells us not to trust that internal voice that internal source we live in a world that tells us to get all our affirmation and power externally the goal of power journal and awakening to your true power is to discover that light within yourself light it up as bright as possible and let it shine to create your best life and the best life that can serve other people with peace and love. It's that simple. So in order to really light up that light within yourself, we call in the light from heaven because we're all connected to that divine source of power, energy, and light. So imagine that there's this golden beam shooting down from heaven it's golden and it's pure white light, almost like a snow squall of diamond powder, crystal powder. It sort of sparkles. It's just like, remember in Star Trek where he says, beam me up, Scotty? 
and there's this beam of light that comes and Captain Kirk all of a sudden is like, goes up the beam and he's somewhere else. Think of it like that. It's pretty cool and it really works. So imagine this beam of golden white light, like this divine squall of diamond dust consuming your entire being, shooting down. And you want to envision this light seeping through that crown chakra into you, like, like lights permeating you from the inside out. And it's saturating all of your cells through your head. And this light is just seeping down and you might feel a warm serenity seeping through your entire being. And it goes down through your throat, your chest, your abdomen. This beautiful, warm, divine light from heaven shoots down your legs and you can see it almost making little lightning bolts into the earth to ground you. And then you imagine at your root, your root chakra or the, the base of your spine, you imagine this light is shooting down through you, going all the way down your spine into the earth. You imagine this light pushing through the rocks, the dirt, the water, the mud, the lava, to the core of Mother Earth. And this light sort of hooks to the core of Mother Earth and it's grounding you. And then you imagine this light pulsating back up. You're grounded at the core of Mother Earth. It pulsates back up through the earth, through your body, all the way up to heaven. So you are the meeting point of heaven and earth. It's really a beautiful feeling when you think of it like that. So this beautiful light is saturating your whole body, your whole spirit, and it's expanding outward from you. From that point, we want to imagine that we're able to rise up this beam and enter a dimension where we're able to connect with the divine and ask for guidance. And when we're there, we ask for the answers to the questions that are posed in Power Journal. So the first question is, who am I? And this is just an example, so I'm just guiding you through it so you can see how this works. You rise up, you feel yourself floating up this beam and you literally feel your sort of weightlessness. It's like a floaty sensation. And you feel yourself rising up where you know you can access your highest self, your deepest truth. And you're rising up and you may feel the presence of angels or spirit guides or whatever your belief system endorses. Or you may just feel like it's you floating up into a space where you can detach from the daily worries of your life and go up into a private sanctuary that's all yours, where you're going to have a talk with your highest self. So feel yourself being elevated, elevated, and then you pass just like when you're in an airplane and you, you go up through the clouds, you pass through a sort of this lavender veil that separates the physical and divine realms pass up through this veil and suddenly like an airplane shooting through the clouds you're up 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 to the heavenly realm and there you just sort of bask in the peace of the silence and stillness of it and you ask i would like to talk with my highest self and get some clear answers about who i am what I want, am I ready for change, and what action steps do I have to take to make those changes? And that's the essence of Power Journal. So just bask in that moment. You can imagine your higher self as looking in the mirror. You can imagine that you're in a cottage sitting across the table talking to your higher self, or you could be talking to God, an angel, an ancestor, a spirit guide, a helping spirit. Whatever works for your imagination, it might feel forced at first, but then you're going to reach sort of a, a tipping point where you know you're not making it up because things come to you that you never thought of. This happens to me every single day and I've been doing this for many years. And it's, it feels magical but then when you bring the information back 
to your 3D life and apply it, you realize you truly get, did get the best guidance for yourself. And so this is a technique that you can use prior to writing in your journal. Now what happens is when you go up and into this meditative state and connect with your higher self, your intuition, which is sort of the language of your soul, the language of God speaking through you, your intuition will tell you the honest truth because it bypasses all of that monkey mind, mental thinking brain that's so cluttered with your inner critic and worries about what people will think and fear and doubt. And so when you bypass that, you get to your deepest truth. And that's the whole essence of Power Journal. So you can stay in that floaty meditative state for as long as you'd like. A lot of times I get there and I don't want to leave because it's so euphoric. It's euphoric. And don't try, don't worry if it's not perfect the first time. It takes practice. And I still even have days where it feels like I'm slogging through mud instead of having clear guidance and visions of my divine meditations. So be easy on yourself. And so once you've asked your higher self these questions in the meditation, you can come back down through that veil, just like an airplane going back down through the cloud layer back to earth. And you come back. Now you're still in a meditative state. This is the time when you start to journal. You ask the question in the divine realm for answers to the question for your power journal entry of the day. And then now it's time to write down whatever guidance you might have heard or seen while you were in meditation, but you stay in that deeply relaxed state where your intuition is speaking to you loudly and clearly. This is called intuitive writing. And this is the key to your most successful power journal experience. Intuitive writing gives you the clear, honest answers from deep within yourself, unhindered by all of the noise of our lives, which includes our own brain telling us, you can't get out of who you are. No. The sanctuary of self where you're able to hear your truth. And that's when you start writing. You write down all the guidance that you heard and then you allow your intuition to keep talking. So for example, the very first question of the Power Journal 28 Day Challenge is, who am I? If you have a pen right now, please start writing, who am I? The beauty of the workbook is that it has pages where it asks each question and then it provides lines for you to write in the book. And so you provide a, you actually create a chronicle of yourself answering all these questions. So that's pretty cool because it keeps it super organized. And in our online version at powerjournal.life, you just go in and get the questions from the website um, when you sign up. But in this meditative state, as your intuitive voice is speaking to you, you start writing, who am I? Now, when I heard that question at a conference, and I've since heard Oprah and many other thought leaders ask the question, who am I? I didn't know the answer. I was deeply disturbed that I didn't know the answer to who am I? Who am I is not my name, my educational credentials, my job, where I live, my family. That's not it, not my appearance. Who am I is what is my purpose in life, my highest purpose, my divine assignment. Why did God put me here during this lifetime? What am I supposed to achieve? Who is that person? Who is that person who's deep inside me who might not reveal herself at all to even her closest family members and friends? Because a lot of times fear holds us back from revealing that, that highest self. So writing that question and answering it with brutal honesty is the key 
to finding the clearest answers. Because when you get those answers, then you can start to create a self and a life that's in alignment with that God purpose. Now, I've been working on this for years on myself and I finally figured it out. <laughs> it's taken a long time. Some people never figure it out. And that's what's inspired me and Catherine, Catherine and I, to create this program so that we can help other people figure it out. Because you might have what looks like a picture perfect life, but if you don't feel deep inside that you're truly fulfilled and on purpose with what you're supposed to be doing to help yourself, your family, your community and humanity and Mother Earth, then there's always going to be that gnawing sense of discontent. And so we want to help you resolve that so that you wake up fulfilled and excited about what you're doing. So let's take a minute and keep writing about who am I? As you're contemplating that, I want you to move into the next question. What do I want? Now, it's easy to say I want a Porsche. I want a 5,000 square foot house. I want vacations on tropical islands. Those are not the answers. What do I want? Most of us want love, health, inner peace, um, fulfillment, excitement, security, safety. And so those are not things you can measure with dollars or certificates or degrees. Those are things that you have to cultivate within yourself. And we help you do that by figuring it out. Now, the Power Journal 28 Day Challenge is 28 days. So there's a different question every day, and it is in alignment with the weekly question. So there are four main weekly questions. Who am I? What do I want? Am I ready for change? And what action steps do I have to take to make that those changes? And so for the next six days of the week, you have questions that make you dive deep into that main overarching question. So let's just stick with the main questions for this talk today and we'll dive deep into the other ones another day. So what do I want? What do you want? I know for me, inner peace is what I want first and foremost, along with health for myself and my family and safety and security. Because if you don't have health and inner, inner peace, it doesn't matter how opulent your life is. It doesn't matter if you're sitting on a tropical beach or driving a Porsche. If you don't have inner peace, it won't be fun. You won't enjoy it. How do you get inner peace? By shutting down the noise, the self-criticism. And let me tell you, through the power journal process that I created before I even called it that, um, my self-criticism was terrible. I struggled with weight most of my life. And I would say the meanest, most horrific things to myself about my body and my appearance. And I was miserable. I mean, the self-talk was just vicious toward myself. And it's only through the process of doing this writing and exploring myself and learning to truly love who I am as I am that I don't, that doesn't even cross my mind anymore. I look in the mirror and I smile and it's sincere. It's like I'm seeing my good friend and I'm happy to see my friend. And that transformation shows that this process works and that people can change our way of thinking. Secondly, I used the power journal process to lose 100 pounds after I had my son. I gained 70 when I was pregnant. I was enormous. My first book, White Chocolate, was coming out um, three months after he was born. And I said, I'm not going to sit in Borders Bookstore or do my TV interviews and do a book tour looking and feeling this bad. So I journaled about how to create my better self that wasn't struggling with food and fat for the rest of my life, that wasn't having this vicious inner critic anymore. I wrote it all out and I took it a step further. At the time, the Oprah Book Club was huge and I really wanted to be on the Oprah Book Club with my first book and all my books. But 
I wrote out what it would be like to sit in the Harpo Studios that at the time had these big yellow buttery leather chairs. They were armchairs. And I wrote in detail about myself sitting in these big chairs with my hands on the arms and just feeling that butter soft leather. And at the time I also was on my quest to lose weight. So I wrote about what my weight loss quest would be, how I would achieve it. And that included setting the goal of walking into a store to buy some skinny leather pants. So one year later, after exercising and dieting and losing the 100 pounds, I walked into a store and just as I had written, I um, bought skinny leather pants. I bought a black pair and a purple pair. So that symbolized the power of writing down your goals and writing down a plan to get there and transforming my thinking process by writing down a new script for my mind to follow, not saying, you're such an ugly fat cow, like I used to say, or you're a disgusting whale. No more, I would write, I love being me, I'm doing my best, I'm creating my best self, and I would just write those kinds of things over and over. Secondly, I was always checking the Oprah website to see about, you know, it says, be a guest on the show, email us. So I looked on their website one day and it said, we're looking for weight loss success stories. So I emailed, I'm like, yeah, me and 10,000 other people are also trying to get on this right now. They're not going to call me. They called. They, they interviewed me. They asked for pictures. I sent the pictures. They called again. They said, we're gonna fly you to Chicago. We're not sure if we'll have you on the show, but well, I went to Chicago. They videotaped me journaling in the Harpo Studios talking about emotional eating. And I then used journaling as my go-to activity instead of eating as much ice cream as my stomach would hold and then some. And then they videotaped me exercising in the Harpo gym. And by this point, I was super fit. I was working out a lot. I was strength training. I felt amazing. And then I found myself sitting in the banana yellow leather armchairs with my hands on the arms, feeling the leather, just as I had written it in my journal. So I literally had manifest these experiences of going in a store to buy the skinny leather pants and getting on the Oprah Winfrey show, sitting in a specific chair. Now, when they taped the show the next day, that was the rehearsal, we weren't sitting in the banana yellow chairs, but whatever, I still was there and I was on the show, which was amazing. So the power of journaling can help you script your life, can help you script a new you. And that's our goal in helping you use one journal entry at a time for maybe 20 minutes a day to recreate yourself, reinvent yourself. Um, so I now journal every day using this method. And oftentimes the night, I journal before bed every night. Oftentimes before bed, I will script the next day not only writing a to-do list, but say for example, if I have a meeting with a client and I want things to go a specific way that's in the best interest of our client and us, I'll write it out. I'll write out specific dialogue. There's so many examples of how I've used this. Um, once I was writing a, a book for a publishing company years ago, and I said, I want to do such a good job that they call me and say, wow, you did a phenomenal job writing this book. Worked really hard, wrote the book, sent it in, they called. And they actually used the term off the chain. <laughs> she said, this is off the chain. <laughs> so I knew I had achieved my goal, but I wrote about it first. And you can do the same thing. Changing that internal dialogue and shutting up the inner critic is crucial because the world is going to be full of criticism enough. So power journal is a way to take control of your mind and take control of the thoughts that bombard us all the time that are not in our best interest. 
So very exciting. Catherine and I are going to offer a coupon code for anybody who's watching this today to get Power Journal for half off, right, Catherine? To join our um, online community. Um, and so <laughs> when you join the online community, it's you don't have the physical workbook, but I highly recommend that you get this. It's only $12.99, but it enables you to write on the pages, which I personally prefer. And I also like having it all written in the same spot. So for example, I'm writing my memoir right now, and this is one of my journals from college. And I've gone through my journals and, you know, extracted little lines of things I've written. And it's really disturbing when you look back on your journals and you see how much time you wasted on certain things. For me, it was the food and fat struggle. Um, but we all have to go through something. And so the beauty of it is you can finally resolve whatever that something is um, when you power journal. And when you have it all written in one spot, it enables you to look back and see how far you've come. Now, when I first started this process, I, um, I started doing live events at Jungle Juice Bar in Detroit where Every month we had a different theme, power journal for weight loss, power journal for healing, power journal for writing your book. And every month we had a group of people come together and talk about, um, we had, had people come together and talk about how to um, use the tools of power journaling to solve whatever problems they were dealing with. So Power Journal for Weight Loss, as I just explained, is an extremely impactful way to change your body and change your mind. And then these experiences pop up that teach you that change is truly possible. Here's one. It was about, I think it was in 2014, I was feeling really, really depressed about something. And my first thought, I was crying. My first thought was, I got to go get my gym shoes on and take a run. That was my first thought in the middle of my angst. And then I was so happy because I realized my first thought was to go running to cope with stress and not eat ice cream or cookies. And that was such an exhilarating moment because it showed I had literally changed my metabolic response to stress. I had cre recreated myself. I wasn't that person who went and ate ice cream till I was nauseous and numbed out, and then so consumed by guilt and anger by, at myself, and that terrible sugar high and crash that makes you feel worse, so you just want more sugar. I don't do that anymore. And in fact, I don't, even eat ice cream anymore. It's like the alcoholic who gave up alcohol. You can't have one bite. Sometimes I might have one spoonful, like if I'm sharing, you know, in a restaurant and someone says, taste this, but I don't, I don't do ice cream anymore. Um, but the point to you today is that when you use a technique like Power Journal to transform yourself, you literally can get rid of habits and create new habits that are productive and healthy for you. And so it enables you to create a lifestyle around the Power Journal experience because once you start to meditate, you will feel so wonderful. You'll wanna learn more about it and incorporate it into your daily practice. And with that, you'll want to incorporate more and more practices into your day. So let me just give you a snapshot because they all enhance the others. Journaling, meditation, exercise is crucial. If you wanna be your best self in every way, be healthy, promote longevity, prevent illness, exercise is imperative at least five times a week. And so I go to the gym, I run, I bike ride. I also learned how to clear my chakras, which once you learn what that is, you'll want to do it because it 
it, when you compare a day when you cleared your chakras and a day that you didn't, you'll notice the huge difference. It's like washing the windows on your house or your car. When you're looking out through a dirty window, your vision is blurry. It's smeared, it's smudged. Chakras are the non-physical energy centers that go from the top of your head down to the base of your spine and each represents something and when you, you can go into a meditative state and clear each of the chakras by thinking of what they each represent and your heart chakra for example is unconditional love giving it and receiving it your throat chakra for example is speaking and hearing your highest truth and so when you go in and focus on this, you're literally cleansing the negative energy from your system. And some people who aren't familiar with this might so think it sounds really, quote, woo woo. That's what people call like spiritual stuff that seems way out there. But once you start to incorporate it into your life, it's not woo woo at all. It's like taking a shower. Every day we take a shower to clean the dirt off our bodies. We need to do our spiritual hygiene as well and spiritual hygiene means cleansing the negative energy from our systems that accumulates when we have a stressful situation or we're scared or we have a trauma or we get angry or we get in an argument with somebody or we get stuck in traffic and feel frustrated because we're late whatever it makes a negative impact on our energy system and we need to clear it and release it otherwise it can manifest as pain so, Catherine, do you have any questions that we could address um, about the Power Journal experience? Because I know that once you started doing it, you noticed its transformative powers. Um, I don't have any questions. I just want to say that I posted the link to powerjournal.life as well as the 50% off coupon, which is half off December 2018. So um, if you have any questions on how that works, just send us, make a comment or send us a, send us your question and we'll be glad to help. The other thing is we have um, a private Power Journal community on Facebook. So when you buy the book or when you sign up for the 28 day challenge online, you automatically get um accepted into that group and you can interact with other power journalers some who have never before journaled in their lives others who have journaled and just want to take journaling to a new level so the world opens up <laughs> so speaking of opening up i want to talk more about intuitive writing intuitive writing is when you tap into that intuitive voice within in yourself and remember in English class we did a stream of consciousness writing exercise where you just start writing and don't stop um, <laughs> um, are you good Catherine oh technical challenge I can't hear you <laughs> I can't hear you so since we were just going to go for 45 minutes, let's, can we just wrap up? Are we ready oh, to wrap sure. up? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So, okay. We have five more minutes. Um, I was talking about intuitive writing and intuitive writing is when you just tap into that space within yourself that's uninhibited uninhib by all your other conscious thoughts and you just let it flow and pour out. Even if you start writing, I don't know what to write. I'm not sure. My brain feels so foggy right now. Oh my gosh. Just keep writing and pretty soon you're going to sort of burst through this floodgate and all this information is going to come out. You might think of an answer to a problem that you've been having forever that finally comes to you and you're able to start writing and just let it flow. And if you set a timer on your phone or your, set a timer for five minutes, 10 minutes, and just let it flow and see what comes out. That is when your intuitive voice, your higher self, and you can think of it as God and spirit speaking through you to you. 
that is when you will get guidance that you know is not from yourself because it comes faster than you can think it. It's like a lightning bolt illuminating your mind suddenly out of the blue. And it's something you never would have thought of. That's how you know it's a higher source speaking your truth to you so that it can illuminate your way of thinking and give you new ideas to transform yourself from the inside out. So, Catherine and I want to thank you for joining us here on the Two Sisters page to talk about our journal. If you have any questions, please leave us a comment and we'll be sure to respond right away. Please visit powerjournal.life, our online community. You can get a half off coupon code to participate in the 28 day challenge. And you can also go to barnesandnoble.com and amazon.com to get the Power Journal 28 day challenge. And join us in our online community where we are helping you make the best of the rest of your life, the best of your life, one journal entry at a time. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next week for another um, Live with Two Sisters writing and publishing, talking about everything under the sun relating to writing and publishing. Thank you.